So today we're going to be turning these little kingfish baits into this. Yellowtail yapper, otherwise known as yellowtail scad, horse mackerel, probably a bunch of other names as well. Super common on the east coast of Australia uh, and all over the world actually as well. In fact, just different varieties, different species from the same similarish family. They be forgiven for thinking that they're just a dodgy bait fish. Um, that's mainly what they're used for and what most people's experience of them has consisted of is just as a bait fish. However, Let's try and change that a bit because these guys are actually super tasty. They're not our premier species like a snapper or a brim or a flathead or even a kingfish, but they are around everywhere and usually all year as well, which is really cool because some of those other species do get quite tricky to find at certain points in the year. Similar family to kingfish, trevally, all that kind of thing. They're in the family of the jacks. So think rich, oily meat. Um, there's not much of it on these guys, so whenever I do try and take them, I try and pick out the biggest ones I can see and shoot them. Now if you are spearfishing and trying to shoot these guys, they are a tiny little target, so it makes fantastic practice for your aim. It's a very good chance you're going to miss over and over and over again. Holy hell, it is hot today. Uh, looks like we might get storm coming in. Uh, it's one of those thunderstormy kind of hot days. Just waiting on a cool change to come through. I'm sweating bullets. We're just gonna get some herbs for a little crumbed yucca. Down here, we've got a native thyme. I always call cut leaf mint. I do like it for its sort of fresh menthol -y kind of flavor. Uh, it loves being trimmed as well. So I can just take a fair bit of this. Mix it through our crumbs. Hi, right, little fella. Here you come, bud. So, we can take a fair bit of this. Use that in our crumb. I like to make sure my knife is nice and sharp before I start. This will make a world of difference, especially when you're dealing with little fish like these. So here we have it, the humble yellowtail yucca. And we've cleaned this guy out. We've bled him, gilled him, everything like that. And you just want to make sure you check the mouth as well because sometimes these guys do get a little parasite called a fish doctor uh, completely harmless to humans however still horrifying as these guys eat the tongue of the fish and replace it eating anything that comes through that mouth so we're just going to remove the wings and the head as we do with any other fish in my opinion it just makes the fish a little easier to handle and you have two options when you're filleting these guys uh, you can fill them as per usual come in through the top uh, run your knife down the spine and then work your way down towards the tail and eventually through the ribs. Or as you see here, you can slide your knife in at the tail and slowly work along that spine bone, just using that as a guide. It is far quicker doing it this way, especially on these small fish. And I'm not particularly worried about waste here because just like the head and those wings, anything left on the spine will be going into a stock later on. So I'm just gonna cut these dodgy little tail bits off. They don't have a whole lot of meat on them. So in my opinion, not worth keeping. And we'll just give me an opening to cut off these little tail scales. I'm not quite sure what you'd call them, but they are a lot bigger than any of the other scales on the fish. Uh, while the other scales are quite small and don't give you too many dramas once the fish is cooked, these will actually stay quite hard and sharp. We're just gonna cut out the ribs as we would with any other fish, sliding the knife in underneath and working our way out the top and then back down towards the belly. You're definitely gonna to want to remove the pin bones as well. You've got two options for this. First, as you can see here, we're just gonna cut on either side of these bones. It is a very effective way to remove them. However, you do damage the fillet quite a lot when you do this. If you don't have tweezers or pliers, I think this is the best method. 
I would recommend that anyone who wants to cook fish gets a pair of fish tweezers or pliers as removing the pin bones does just make the dining experience that much better. As you can see here, I'm just working my thumb along the fillet, filling out those bones and we're coming in behind with the tweezers just to pull them out. Once that's all done, we're going to put the fillets to the side and we're going to start with a few cloves of garlic. We're going to cut the bums off, we're going to crush them, peel them and then chop them. Once you've done that, we'll put them in a mixing bowl and start picking our cut leaf mint. Give that a quick chop as well and chuck it in the bowl with the garlic. Next up we got a lemon, we're just going to take some rind off it real quick. It makes it real easy with this rind peeler just here. A squeeze of lemon as well. Now I recommend doing this in a little bowl on the side. I did get a few pits in there and it is a bit of a pain in the ass to pull them out. Some native pepper berry, if you don't have pepper berry you can chuck in normal cracked pepper as well. That is perfectly fine. A few splashes of olive oil, definitely a few here. You want to cover all of those fillets and make sure they're all sitting in that beautiful mix right there. Drop your fillets in, mix it up, cover them up and let them sit for around 10 to 15 minutes. You can leave them longer if you like, you could do it overnight if you really want. Uh, but here I did 10 to 15. So we're also going to add in a sprinkle of salt, uh, up to you when you do this, I just did it afterwards, and our breadcrumbs. And we're also going to add our breadcrumbs. I'll give that a good mix. Uh, when you are mixing it to this point, I would recommend a bowl much bigger than you think you would need because it just makes mixing that much easier. Once everything's nice and coated, we're just going to drop them in the baking tray just here. And any remaining breadcrumbs, all these beautiful breadcrumbs soaked in olive oil, we're just going to pop on top of the fish here. Now, because these are soaked in the oil, they will crisp up and form a beautiful golden crust over the top. So once you got all that covered, and you got them all spread out with a bit of breathing room. Uh, we're going to chuck them under a medium temperature grill for about 10 to 15 minutes. And there you have it guys, it is a herb crumbed yellowtail yakka. And you serve this at a dinner party, a barbecue, anything like that and people will not believe you that these are normally only considered a bait fish. So I hope you guys enjoyed, if you did leave a like and I hope you are inspired to try something new, something a bit different, maybe a fish that you never thought you would eat before. A fish that is super abundant, especially here on the east coast of Australia but also around the world. A fish that we find so often when we are trying to target these more premier species. But you might as well take a few home for a feed. You guys subscribe and stay tuned for some more epic stuff coming up. Mm -hmm.